to move bamboo to a commercially viable crop in the United States on anything but a very small scale, um, I think we have to do things differently from the way that we've traditionally done them. Bamboo is very labor intensive. It takes quite a bit of work to thin them. So we're together here today working on some of the individual plots, getting them thinned, which is going to make it easier for access for irrigation water, for fertilization, and also for harvesting of the shoots. And it makes the yield larger. Yeah, we have seven varieties of bamboo and they all are ones that have marketable edible shoots but the shoots and the poles of the bamboo vary quite a bit and on my left here we have the variety vivax and you can see that these tend to have very large poles fairly few poles the number of shoots is fairly small but they're very large and they're highly prized in restaurants we have another variety called nuda you can see that, the, that we have much narrower poles in this variety. We would have many more shoots. They would be smaller shoots. But you can see this is also a very attractive variety of bamboo as well. So among these varieties, we have all of them with edible shoots. And then depending on the size of the pole, the strength of the pole, they could have different uses. Perhaps some could be used for um, for furniture, flooring, etc. Others may be best used as biofuel. Others may be used in, in kind of garden fencing architecture. Okay, so this to plot to my left is yellow groove that we haven't yet thinned this year. You can see it has uh, way too many canes in it for uh, desirable production. Um, what we try to do when we uh, do these is we try to have about one cane per square foot and that leaves then enough light uh, coming into the grove to provide growth for the uh, future. As compared to this next one here to my left, we're gonna move on to Rubro, which we've already thinned today, and it looks great. It's got a nice open canopy with a little bit of dappled light onto the floor of the, uh, of, of the bamboo. This will give light for the bamboo shoots to grow, and you'll be able to walk into harvest uh, bamboo shoots and do any other pruning you need to do, like delimbing lower uh, leaves so you, they end up not poking you in, in your eye. And if you hit them at the right time, they come off very easily. You can just come in and go like that, and they just break right off, where if you wait later in the year, you gotta get a set of uh, pruners out here to uh, actually prune them. It's easy to come through and just uh, knock off the side shoots like that, and you're done. What is interesting about these groves is when you look at them, um, the, the bamboo looks quite healthy. It's growing quite well. Yet we have run this at a very low level of inputs, and that's been because of our limited budget. We only irrigate when it gets really dry. We also um, have added low levels of fertilizer. We're hoping with an increased budget that we'll be able to increase the degree of management and maintenance to the plots increase the yield of shoots and increase the yield of biomass. And one of the things that we really like as scientists is when we have people who are working in the field who actively participate with us and that makes the science not a one-way street but a two-way street and that's definitely been what we've had here in these groves. One of the wonderful things about this grove is it's been so volunteer. There was no funding at all at first. And uh, Wade and Andy worked with Wade Bennett, who is a farmer up on the Enumclaw Plateau. And for five years, I think it is now, he's harvested the shoots from those plots and has weighed them, counted the shoots, put it on the data sheet, and then Andy compiles the data. And we know each year how much yield in shoots, as in fresh bamboo shoots for food, um, each grove, each variety has yielded. And we can compare it with the ambient temperature at the time so that we can tell if there's a cold spring, maybe the sh shooting is delayed and uh, maybe the yield is less. We have temperature probes in some of our plots so that we can measure soil temperatures and see how that's related to shooting in some of the different varieties. The probe is actually eight inches deep into the ground. It's down, um, down this tube here, but then we have um, a chip on the top that we can download and collect that temperature data and so we're able to follow it throughout the growing season. We're putting the bamboo into bundles that weigh probably 150-200 pounds each and these are going to be shipped um, 
to another location where there's going to be some test burns and test pyrolysis done to look at the energy value of the bamboo. And we're keeping these separate by varieties so that they will, they will be able to compare the different varieties um, for energy value. A couple of opportunities that we have been pursuing do not have funding for yet. One is looking at bamboo ground up as a substitute for peat in potting mixes. And we're working with some researchers from Oregon State University and also back east to try to get funding to look at bamboo as part of a larger project looking at many alternative types of potting substrates.